The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing us under of the soul and the spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself, approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Welcome once again to our daily doctrinal Bible study through the YouTube of the Vic Balbito Evangelistic Ministry. Without much ado, let us go right away to our routine by preparing ourselves for the study of the Word of God. We have to be sure that we will be filled by God the Holy Spirit. He controls us while we study God's Word. Therefore, let us pray. Father, we're indeed grateful to you for the privilege of having the freedom to assemble ourselves together once again in this Bible study through the YouTube to focus our attention upon your word, which is forever a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you, Father, that you have preserved your word in writing for or for it both in the original languages as well as in translation. You have provided the activated human spirit for faith perception of doctrine. You have provided God the Holy Spirit who is the ultimate teacher and the gift of pastor teacher for communication of doctrine so that every believer can consume the oxygen of the spiritual life, your word and growth from infancy to adolescence and from adolescence on to maturity and fulfill the purpose for which you have left every believer in this life. And we know, Father, the greater knowledge of doctrine, the greater the growth, the greater the blessing, the greater impact, the greater production of divine good, the greater the reward in the eternal state. And there is every benefit and no detriment to growing in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, as we approach the study of your word today, we ask that you open our hearts to the truth, that we may fulfill that divine mandate of spiritual growth, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Okay. Today we have a new lesson. And uh, it is entitled, God's Mandate to Christians. Do not do anything. That's the title. I repeat. God's Mandate to Christians. Do not do anything. Okay, first of all, the most difficult or the hardest thing to consider in the Christian life is God's mandate in the Word of God of don't do anything. That is God's mandate to a believer. However, this particular mandate of God of not letting you do anything does not mean you simply sit down and allow your mind to just be blank and you just ignore all the realities around you. What God actually means to say is this. Listen. When he says, don't do anything in so far as God's mandate is concerned, is this. God wants you to use your thinking, your mind, to trust him. God wants you to trust Him 
mentally. In the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 13, it says there, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord. Now, here is a secret. The secret is that the Lord can only give strength to the weak, to the one who has no strength. The Bible does not say that God helps those who help themselves. No, it doesn't say. And whoever originated that saying, or where it came from, and of course it sounds good, that is not found or cannot be found in the Word of God. God does not help those who help themselves. God only helps those who are helpless. Did you hear that? In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29, I will read it. He gives strength to the one, weary, and increases the power to the weak. You have always been trying to solve the problems you face in your life. You have always been busy looking for solutions to your everyday problems. But the only thing you can reach is that there is no solution. Instead of trying to solve those problems by yourself, which are sure to fail, human and frail as we all are, God wants you to realize that you will never be able to solve your problems and that He wants you to start trusting Him. In Exodus 14, verse 14, it says, The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be one, still. The Word of God says, Wait on the Lord. But how? How do we wait on the Lord? Well, first of all, you should understand what the word wait means. This word wait can be translated into the word trust or faith. There are a few Hebrew words for this word trust or faith. The first word for this is the word amen. Now, please understand that the word amen which we oftentimes use, is not an English word. It's not. It's a Hebrew word. Amen. And do you know what the word Amen really means? It means believed. We can find its reference, or we can find this word in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. And it is used in that verse primarily for salvation. But what this word Amen actually means here is that you should take the Lord as the source or basis or foundation. You should take the Lord as you wall, as your wall. Okay? I repeat, you should take the Lord as your wall, whom you can lean on. That's what the word Amen means. Now the next word here is the word Batak. B-A-T-A-C-H. Batak here means trust. And we can read this in the book of Psalm, Psalm chapter 37, verses 3 and 5. And we can also read this in Psalms 91, verse 2. Now this word batak, or trust in English, its first use here is that of being a wrestler wherein as that wrestler is able to throw his opponent down, he wins in that game. That's the first use and what the word batak means. But here, what the word of God actually means by the word batak is this, that as a believer, you are to pick up your problems and slam them all on the Lord. In other words, God wants you to cast all your problems to Him. That is what it means. Now, the third word here is the word kasa. C-H-A-S-A-H. The word kasa here is faith. 
We can read this in Psalm 57, 1. Here in that use of the word kasa in Psalm 57, 1, this is being used as a picture of a rabbit seeking refuge in a cleft of a rock. It looks for a refuge or look for a place where it can hide itself and it goes into the cleft of a rock. There, that rabbit goes into it to take refuge. This is what kasa means here. Now, in the Word of God, this very word kasa is used as a picture of a believer who hides or takes refuge in the cleft of the rock, where the rock there is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you take refuge in the Lord Jesus Christ, there is nothing, nothing at all that can harm you. Nothing. Now the fourth word is the word yakal. Y-A-C-H-A-L. And yakal means to trust under pressure. That is being used in Job chapter 13 verse 15 and in Lamentations chapter 3 verses 21 and 24. Now the word yakal actually means that as a believer yourself in the midst of grave and terrible crises, sufferings and hardships in your life, you are able to put your trust, total trust in the Lord, trusting Him fully that He will be the one who can deliver you from those crises. That is what it means by yakal. Now, the fifth word here is the word kawa. Q-A-W-A-H. Now, what does kawa, the word kawa means? Okay? The word kawa means wait. So, here it is. This is where the word wait comes from. But according to what we have already said a while ago, to wait is what? It is to believe or to trust. So, to wait is to trust to believe. And we can read this in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. Now, the very first use of this word kawah in Hebrew is a picture of one who makes a rope. How does one make a rope? Well, first by weaving a small, frail, and easily broken strand until it becomes a strong rope that cannot be broken. Yes, you may be a weak little strand, but you keep trusting the Lord in spite of all difficulties, in spite of the hopelessness of the situation. You will exchange your frailty for the strength of the Lord. The result of perpetuating the faith rest life technique, in spite of overwhelming odds, is an exchange of human strength for divine strength. In other words, when you are in a situation that you think seems hopeless, and you say, Lord, I cannot do it. There is nothing that I can do, Lord. Do you know what the Lord always answers? The Lord would answer you, but I can. I'm going to give you strength to endure your problem. I will provide every resource necessary for you to meet this tragedy in your life. You trade in your inadequate human strength for God's all-sufficient power. And do you know the result? Hmm? The result? Let us read Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who hope, which means wait on the Lord, will renew their what? Strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. You do not live down on the dumps, you soar above your problems. 
Furthermore, you will run and not get tired. Notice that the exchange of strength is not designed for sprinters. What is a sprinter? You know what a sprinter is? A sprinter is one who believes God's promises for a short time, especially when his emotions are aroused. But when the stimulation disappears, so does his faith. On the other hand, divine strength is designed for the long-distance runner who appropriates God's power at a steady pace. The power of God does not fluctuate. It is constant and continuous and does not depend on human emotions. Divine power in your life depends on trusting the Word of God during the tough times or in prosperity. Divine power does not depend on your feelings or emotions. It does not depend on your own reasoning or justification. It does not depend on your experience. What it depends on is on your knowledge of Bible doctrine, which has become part and parcel of your life and which you are using in your Christian life. It's the Word of God that's metabolized in your soul, which makes you able to handle any circumstances in life, be it adversity or prosperity. We are going to continue our study on this particular topic. Therefore, we invite you to be with us tomorrow as we continue in our spiritual momentum. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for that so great salvation which you have freely provided for us through your uniquely born Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for your wonderful protocol plan for each one of us. All these we ask in the name of our wonderful Lord Jesus Christ, our only Savior. Amen.